Hello everyone, welcome to a new lecture. In this video we are going to talk about Earth's major plates. In the previous lecture we talked about the continents or we talked about the idea of continental drift. The idea of the continents not having a fixed position but actually they are moving. The continents are moving away from each other. So as you can see in this animation the continents at one point of time they were all one big mass but slowly and over millions of years they got away from each other. So we understand that. We understand that the continents are drifting. But you have to ask the question why are these continents drifting? Why are they getting away from each other? Well, to answer that question, let me give you a small illustration. As you can see, this is an orange. An orange is composed of an inside and the outside. The outside is the skin and the inside is the fruit that we eat. It. The outside is the skin. And just like an orange, the earth is composed of an outside skin that is called the crust. But this crust it is not a complete crust that does not have any cracks or breakages. But actually, this crust is broken down into several smaller pieces. And these pieces are called plates, or the plates that compose the earth. So just like in the case of the orange, if you have an orange and the outer skin, you divide the outer skin into several parts. Just like that, earth is divided, or the crust of the earth is divided into several plates or parts. As you can see in this picture, this is a flattened picture of the earth. We have about 12, 13 plates that compose the crust of the earth. Actually, seven of these plates compose the major part of the surface of the earth. So these are the seven North American plate, South American plate, Pacific plate, African plate, Eurasian plate, Australian Indian plate, and Antarctic plate plate and these are the plates so for example this is the pacific plate this is antarctic plate so the entire face of the earth or the crust of the earth is not one big unit but actually it is broken down into several plates and the major plates are these and these account for 94 percent of the earth's surface so when i ask you the question why are the continents moving well the continents are moving because the continents are riding or the continents are on these plates so for example south america is on the south american plate north america is on the north american plate so united states and canada is on the north american plate australia is on the Australian plate. Europe and Asia is on the Eurasian plate. When these plates move, the continents also move because the continents are attached to the plates. So when the plates move, the continents also move. And this is why we have continental drift. In later lectures, we'll talk about why these plates are moving. But in this lecture, we are only talking about the plates moving. So we understand the plates move, therefore the continents move. And that's why we have continental drift. As you can see in this picture, something very interesting about the plates moving is on the edges. So for example, here we have the Pacific plate and we have North American plate. At the edge of these two plates, interesting things happen. So for example, either these two plates will collide or either these two plates will get away from each other or they will travel past each other. These are the interesting things that happen at the boundaries between plates. So let's look at this in more detail. So in between two plates, either we have something that is called convergent or we have divergent or we have transform plate boundaries. So we have convergent plate boundaries. In this case, two plates are colliding or they are destroying each other. It's called destructive margins. When two plates collide, we get a convergent plate boundary. So for example, as you can see it right here, two plates are going head to head to each other and it is a convergent plate boundary. A divergent plate boundary, on the other hand, is two plates getting away from each other. And as you can see it here, we have a plate here, a plate here, and it is getting away from each other. We get a divergent zone. Transform plate boundary. A transform plate boundary is when two plates slide past each other. And as you can see it here, we have a plate here, a plate here. It is sliding past each other. So at the margins or at the boundaries of plates, interesting things happen. Convergent plate boundaries happen, divergent plate boundaries happen, and transform plate boundaries happen. 
Okay, so now we understand we have plates that compose the surface of the Earth. The continents are on these plates, and since the plates are moving, the continents also move, and with this we get continental drift. And at the boundaries of these plates, we get activities like convergent, divergent, and transform boundaries. So let's look at these three types of boundaries in more detail. The first one, divergent plate boundaries. Divergent plate boundaries are boundaries where plates move away from each other due to upwelling of magma. So as you can see in this animation, we have a plate and we have upwelling of magma that comes to the surface. This upwelling of magma pushes away plates from each other. As you can see in the animation, when the magma comes to the surface, it pushes to the side, to the right, and to the left, and it creates a space. Therefore, it creates more plate. The edge of the oceanic crust becomes progressively older in both directions away from the ridge. So, for example, if you take a point right here, it is older than a point or a rock that is right here, that is closer to the magma. And the reason is when magma comes out, for example, let's say the age of that magma when it's cooled down is zero. But when more magma comes out and pushes that old magma that became rock to the side, now that magma has zero age and the magma that already cooled down has an age of one. Just like that, the more you get away from the region where magma comes out and creates more plate, the older the rock is. If the spreading rate is high, magma must be rising rapidly, and that is very intuitive. So divergent plate boundaries is a plate boundary, or it's a region where plates are getting away from each other due to magma upwelling from underneath. And the further you get from the region where the magma comes out, the older the rock gets. We have two types of divergent plate boundaries. So either we get rift valleys from continental crust, which is due to magma coming out under continental crust, or we have mid-oceanic ridges that are due to magma coming out under oceanic crust. And this is an example of a mid-oceanic ridge because it is in water and this is oceanic crust. The magma is coming out under the oceanic crust. Crust. This is an image that shows the age of rocks depending on how far they are from mid-oceanic ridges. So for example, these lines are mid-oceanic ridges and in these regions, plates are getting away from each other. So the red rocks are young rocks and the blue rocks are old rocks. As you can see, as we move away from the mid-oceanic ridges, the age of the rocks get older and older because in this region, for example, in the dark red region, New oceanic crust is being made, but as you move away, you meet the old oceanic crust. Exactly right here, we have young rocks and we have old rocks. We have young rocks and when we move away from the mid-oceanic ridges, we get old rocks. An example of a mid-oceanic ridge would be mid-Atlantic ridge, which is a very huge ridge that is in the Atlantic Ocean that you can say it divides west and east. You have United States right here and South America here. You have Europe and Africa here. This mid-oceanic ridge or the mid-Atlantic ridge, it separates these two regions of the globe into two parts. And basically what it does in this region, you have spreading. So Africa is getting away actually from South America and Europe is getting away from the United States. And I think the rate is 2.5 centimeters per year. The other type of boundaries that we have is convergent plate boundaries. In the divergent plate boundary, we saw how two plates get away from each other. But convergent plate boundaries, two plates are going head to head to each other. They are going in opposite direction, facing each other, and they are colliding. Convergent plate boundaries is also called subduction zones because when two plates collide, one of them has to go underneath or one of them has to be subducted and the other one will be on top. Convergent plate boundaries, we have three types. Either when two continental crusts collide or when an oceanic crust and a continental crust collide or when two oceanic crusts collide. So we have three types of convergent plate boundaries. In the first one, when two continental crusts collide, one of them has to be subducted and as a result we get mountains. So as you can see we have one continental crust colliding with the other and this one is being subducted. As a result the other one goes up and it creates mountains. The other type of that convergent plate boundary is when an oceanic crust is being subducted under a continental crust. As you can see we have a oceanic crust is being subducted under a continental crust and as a result of this we get 
continent volcanic arc. When this oceanic crust goes down, it melts and the magma comes up, it creates continental volcanic arc. The last type of convergent plate boundary that we have is when an oceanic crust is being subducted under another oceanic crust and as a result we get volcanic Iceland arc. As you can see, we have an oceanic crust right here. It is being subducted under this oceanic crust, and as a result, we get volcanic Iceland arc. So these are convergent plate boundaries. We have either two continental crusts colliding, or one continental crust and one oceanic crust, or two oceanic crusts colliding. And in each case, we get a different geological feature. This is a picture of Himalaya, and as I mentioned, it is a result of two continental crusts colliding. The Himalaya is a result of the Indo-Australian plate colliding with the Eurasian plate. When these two plates collided a long time ago, it created the Himalayan mountains. This is Karmsky volcano in Kamstika Arc volcano in Russia. This is an example of a continental crust colliding with an oceanic crust. And this volcanic arc is a result of the Pacific plate subducting under the Eurasian plate. This is a picture of Aleutian Islands that is took from the space. It is in Alaska. This is an example of two oceanic crusts colliding. And Aleutian Islands or Aleutian Arc Islands are a result of the Pacific plate being subducted under the North American plate. So this is about conversion plate boundaries. Lastly, we have transform plate boundaries. Transform plate boundaries are caused by transform faults. So when two plates are passing by each other, we get transform plate boundaries. As you can see right here, we have one plate right here. This is western part of United States and this is California. When we have two plates going past each other, we get transform plate boundaries. It is caused by transform faults and lithospheric plates slide past one another in a horizontal manner. One of the largest transform boundaries occurs along the boundary of the Northern American and Pacific plate and is known as the San Andreas Fault. So in transform plate boundaries, two plates are not going underneath each other, are not getting away from each other, but actually they are going past each other and it's a result of a transform fault. And with this we come to the end of our lecture. So to recap, 